Okay, where we last left off with the Sea Ray was uh, Thursday or something like that, and I uh, was trying to get, um, we got the lip ground off of the, um, uh, the deck, where the deck used to be, uh, and I was trying to get all the carpet glue off. Um, I used, I think it's six or seven of the flap wheels getting the uh, port side done, um, and it just, it, all it does is it just gum it up and it moves it to another spot, it really doesn't remove it. So I uh, went and got a gallon of goof off, tried that yesterday. It rained all day yesterday, so I had to work underneath the tent. And uh, I didn't really get a whole lot of work done, because every time I'd, I'd get out here and start going, it'd start coming down like cats and dogs. So you guys didn't miss much. And then this morning, I was cussing too much to even be on video. <laughs> um, I, uh, I tried the goof off. I went back out there and tried another couple of flap wheels, tried wire wheels, tried everything. I think I spent about 100 to 120 bucks just trying different things. And all the suggestions, even tried gasoline. Um, gasoline just it just it didn't work it, it would soften it up and it turn into kind of like a gum uh, but it didn't it didn't take it off it didn't dissolve it to where it would come off so in a last ditch effort effort I went back to what somebody suggested a long time ago which is MEK or methyl ethyl ketone I think that's how you say it so I went up there it's twenty one dollars a gallon uh, from Lowe's came back grabbed me some rags put on my respirator and put on some uh, stripping gloves because it's really really caustic it's like acetone but it doesn't evaporate as quick uh, rubbed it on there and lo and behold it took it off. I mean it really actually it was pretty easy um, You wiped it on there let it go I, What I did is I started with a, a cup of, of the stuff and would pour in my uh, the, the MEK soak a rag and then just dr just drench it all across the uh, the side uh, And I was amazed uh, it got I'd say 98% off before I ran out of MEK and the rest of it I know I can get off with a flap wheel. So um, That is what works if somebody's wondering about this stuff now it is designed to thin polyester resins, designed to remove polyester resin. Uh, it is an acetone product, so it's something that softens resin. You gotta be careful not to let it pool up in places that you put glass down, uh, and you don't wanna just keep, it, you can't use a wire brush on it either because it actually removes fiberglass. So um, I can actually see it benefiting uh, when you're gonna do a layup, especially on old glass, because it really softens it up to where you can actually get a good bond. Um, obviously, there's no chemical bond involved, but it gives you a good mechanical bond. Um, so, you know, we may trial out a couple of layups as using the MEK because it really makes the stuff soft and it makes it sticky. So therefore the, the polyester would stick really good. Now, if I'm wrong in my theory, somebody let me know, but that's kind of what acetone's designed to do. But the thing is acetone dries so quickly um, that the, uh, the, uh, the old fiberglass gets, uh, gets hard again really quickly. So anyway, um, let's go over here and look inside the boat and you can see just how clean it came out. It came out nice. I like it. All right. <clears throat> See if we can't get this before the battery dies. I gotta go over there and charge it again. I'm like an idiot, I forgot. Okay, so you can see that there is the side panel, and that's actually the gray part, it's just gel coat. We're, I'm gonna get in here and grind here in a minute, but I wanted to show you guys what it what the MEK does. It took all of that stuff off. There's a couple of little spots here and there, but like I said, real simple with the grinder. I mean, you see all the carpet remnants left down there? All down over here that's what it does is it just it, once it gets on there within about a minute the carpet just brushes off and it just left a super clean surface that I can go back in here and rough up with my 36 grit uh, excuse me a little burp there and then uh, make it happen so I'm really happy with the way it turned out so uh, anybody needs to know that's what you need, that's what you do is you get the uh, MEK out and it'll make it happen all right, so I'm gonna get in here with my flap wheel. I'm not gonna video this because um, we're actually having some rain, so I have to kind of put this over every every so often. I don't wanna ruin my camera either. And you guys seen enough of me grinding. So uh, I'm gonna rough all this stuff up, and then I'm gonna clean the boat completely because our next step is uh, we're going to uh, put uh, start measuring for the deck and make it happen. Let me show you my idea that I came up with for this deck replacement. All right, I saw the other day a guy was using welding wire to get angles uh, in one of these like you know, hot rod restoration shows or something like that. So I went to Home Depot and I found this ground wire that um, basically uh, was sitting in a scrap pile. So I got it fairly cheap. It still was about 12 bucks, but that's what copper is right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this copper to bend, and I'm going to draw on my little desk here. I'm going to use the copper to bend into the front of the boat. So therefore I get, actually it'll probably be more like this. So that way I get my contour and then what we'll do is we'll lay out our, our pink stuff on the ground and then we'll trace around it and then we'll cut it. And if all goes well, 
we will have uh, the exact pattern of the uh, the bow of the boat. And then from then then on out, I'll just uh, we'll just do measurements from the center of the boat. I think we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, I'm not quite 100% sure there yet, but I think this is going to work really well, so we can get the the bow section done, make it happen, and go on. So. Anyway, I'm going to put the camera on the charger. Next time you see me, we should be getting ready to do that right there. All right, camera's charged. Um, here's proof of concept, all right? Uh, got a little overzealous and uh, talking about cutting the deck and all that kind of good stuff, but we got to put the, uh, the base for the, the gas tank and the ski locker in. Uh, that's a must. That has to get done today. Um, I can't go any further with capping or, or doing anything with the deck until those are in because uh, I'll forget. So anyway, what I did is I took my little copper, took it up to the front and bent it in the right configuration. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it down. I'm gonna trace around it and uh, go see if it fits in the boat. Um, probably isn't gonna be perfect, but you know what? It'll work and use peanut butter to fill in all the gaps. But uh, I got basically 15 inches by seven feet is what I needed to make that one. And I'm making this out of half inch plywood It'll be perfectly fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put 1708 on the bottom and I'm going to leave a tab sticking out here and then I'm going to glass it or I'm going to resin it and then leave this tab not resin. So I'll resin right up to the edge, right up to the edge and then I'll leave the tab off so that way when I lay it in there then that tab will lay up against it. Now I, I realize it'll lay the, oh you know, I didn't think about that. It'll lay the wrong way up against the, uh, the deck. Hmm poses an issue. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Maybe I'll put it in there and then cut it off is what I'll do with a razor knife. I'll figure it out, no big deal. But uh, anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna trace this and cut it and we'll see if it fits. Well, my little technique worked out pretty good. Got them laid in there and uh, kind of came up with a, another little issue I gotta solve, but I think I've got it solved is uh, the back of the ski locker so you can get your drainage there's a little hole down there for water flow and this is the way it was constructed from the factory but I don't want to um, uh, you know I don't want to lose something down there like uh, somebody puts into something in the ski locker and all of a sudden it gets lost up underneath the uh, the deck so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go find me some mesh that goes right there. Once this is all glassed in and everything like that, matter of fact, I might do it as we glass it in and round that mesh up over right here and then glue it into place with resin. That way nothing falls in there but water goes through. That'll work out pretty nice. I thought about going all the way back with it and glassing it in and putting a little hole in there. Eh, I don't know about all that. Too much of a pain there. I think the mesh thing is a good idea. Plus it allows you to just look down there and see if there's anything clogging it. I don't know. I'm just talking here. But now i got to go get my uh, gas tank, put it in here, and make sure that it fits okay. That's key thing. Make sure that it's going to uh, sit in here properly and not rock around. And uh, Hopefully we did it right. <laughs> and I tell you, guys, it's humid today. Oh my god, is it humid. I don't mind the heat. I really don't. Um, I got a little breeze blowing, so it's not too terrible. But man, I tell you, if you're not used to humidity, this will kill you. But I'd much rather this, much rather this than uh, 40 and 50 degree weather. I just don't like cold weather at all, especially when the wind blows. Anyway, I'm gonna pull the uh, gas tank over here, put it in, and we'll see what it does. Well, I got to thinking uh, after we uh, I videotaped last about the bottom of these, uh, the gas tank area and the ski area. By the way. A gas tank area it took me about two and a half hours of cutting, putting the tank in, cutting, putting the tank in. I had a real scare. I thought maybe I cut my deck too low, but I remeasured at least 50 times and, and it's okay. It's just this was too thick. So I, I thought it was a foot wide. It ended up being only about seven inches wide. Um, so what you're looking at is the bottom here. And I thought, man, I don't need 1708 on there. I got all this damn chop strand in here. So you know what? We're going to put the chop strain on the bottom because all it's done is for use for is for um, um, what do you call it waterproofing. So then when we flip it over, we got chop strain that can adhere to the to the to the um, the hull. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this out really good right up to the edge, and I'm going to leave the rest of it out so that way we can use it to glue 
uh, and tab to the deck and then we'll come back with 1708 over the top. Yeah, I know we don't need 1708, but you know what? It'll look good. That took a quart and a half just for those two pieces. Shows you how chop strand really eats up the uh, resin. <laughs> 